today we are going to talk about thumbnailing and we're going to do that with our CWBI Society of Children Books Writers and Illustrators contest entry. So um, I'm going to read the prompt for you guys. This is what I have to do. It has to pertain to this. They don't specify whether it has to be a water, um, I'm sorry, a comic or a kid lit illustration. I think they expect a kid lit illustration, but last year I turned it into a comic because I'm a comic artist and I do what I want. So the prompt for this year is then Emma saw what Ruby brought to show the class and she thought it was completely on fair so this these are our character designs that we just settled on and we're gonna find ourselves a fresh sheet of sketchbook paper so we can begin brainstorming and I went ahead and I got started without you guys which is unfair because I had a mental image of what we're gonna call the hero shot the money shot uh, and I just had to get it on paper or I would lose it so with this prompt we have, I would say at least two beats, maybe even three. So we've got um, this reaction beat, which is, and she thought it was completely unfair. So that's our money shot. That's our final panel, our reaction shot. Anyway, we've got two parts here, but I want to break it up into three. I want to break it in up into, um, and unfortunately I'm going to have a hard time articulating this because it's more of a mental thing than it is a verbal thing. So I'm just going to go ahead, get started. So what ends up happening for me with these is last year it ended up being a double page spread with a big ear image and then two small panels. And, um, I, so theoretically, this whole second page here could be our reaction shot. So we have Emma in the foreground freaking out. And then Ruby with her big cake. That, and the teacher in the background. And then we could even have some seated students in the foreground if we want. And that gives us a whole other page. Now, um, with this other page, we sort of want to avoid breaking it in half neatly like that because it's gonna make it harder to read. So let's show you here, right? So you're gonna wanna read it like that if we break it up evenly like that. So we're gonna have to try and control reading flow if we opt to go with this layout here. So one of the ways we can do that is we can have one really thin panel at the top and then the big panel and then hopefully force people's eyes through directing them through character acting to read in this direction. So we're talking about layout right now. We can also try with the diagonal because that the diagonal is gonna naturally force the eye down. It's a little harder to stage around a diagonal though. And so what I was thinking we could do is for panel one, we could have Emma showing what she brought to the class which would be guitar. Chose class, her guitar, panel two, begins playing it, panel three, class, Gasps, panel four, behind Emma, Ruby wheels in cake. So we actually added another panel, which will sort of solve this, how do I read the page problem we have here. We could even do panel Five, Emma, 
reacts. So this could be, uh, so Emma maybe doesn't know. And so I can easily reference this. I'm gonna tear this out. So we're dealing with five panels here. We've got that double page spread. And it doesn't have to be a double page spread. We could, theoretically, there's nothing in the rules against it. We could have two sequential pages meant to be read sequentially. So it is an option. So on page one, we have, we could have a pull out shot of Emma with her guitar, pull in shot, Emma playing the guitar and note these are thumbnails so they are meant to be super rough and her eyes would be closed in that panel because we're reliant on a reveal. Oh no, actually the better way to do this is have three panels on that first page so that we get the gasp and then we get the react on the next page and that'll let us keep in fact, I'm gonna flip it. So we've got our second page is a full page and it's a reaction. So a couple ways we can do page one. We can have the large Emma showing off her guitar. And in this shot, it should be an establishing shot of the classroom. And then in the next panel, we have her playing the guitar and we can pull in, we can even do an inset and inset would just be one panel like that. But I used an inset last year, so I don't really wanna do another inset. And I'd have to pull out more, but I do want it to be a close up of her playing. And then, so we need to have, boop, boop, boop. We need to show the background again. Cake on a wagon, led by Ruby. We can also, and this is gonna need to be restaged. So I have a basic rough idea of my thumbnails. I'm going to redraw it up here. So we went from having a double page spread to two sequential pages. And I'm just eyeballing it here. I'm gonna print out a template later on. Actually, we can even go in this direction, oh, I don't like that, where we have her playing here instead of like an inset. So we have our first panel where it's pulled out to show Emma and her guitar. Ah, Super Saiyan guitar. And the backs of people's heads to imply classroom and the door and the chalkboard and then play, play. And that has a nice vertical that points us down. Pull in a bit. And we can draw some like discordant notes. And I'm gonna have to Google or pose with my own guitar because I need reference for that. And oh, we can have the teacher holding the door for a waving ruby. Gasp! And then we can move Emma down. Ruby showing off this massive cake in a wagon because I thought that would be kind of funny. Ah. And then we still need teachers, so we may have to change 
that shot a little bit. Teacher clapping in the background. So that is where I'm at so far with thumbnails and layouts. And with thumbnails, the faster and messier you draw in your initial stages, the more iterations you can knock out. It's not like you're losing a significant amount of time. Um, so you can finally land on something that works for you. So um, I am going to go ahead and prepare my thumbnail template for this and get cracking on that. So after I talked to you guys last, I did a little thinking and figured out why do it the hard way when I can do it the easy way. So what I did is I scanned the thumbnail I drew as part of the demonstration for you guys. I converted it to blue lines and you guys can find a tutorial on how to do that at natosoup.blogspot.com under the Injured to Comic Craft section. And then I printed it out on just some regular cartridge paper. So what this saves me is I have the placement for a lot of what I want in this illustration already figured out. So why not just, uh, you know, work from that? And if this doesn't work, I can always redraw it on those templates I printed out. And this is a comic template that I got off the internet. I think it was originally from DeviantArt. I can certainly look it up and link it for you guys. And it has been super handy over the years. So I'd like to credit the original artist. Me saying credit the original artist isn't me actually crediting the original artist. It is me saying keep an eye on the description for the original creator of this. Because this little template has been super helpful over the years. All right, so we've got basic template reestablished. Uh, I'm going to raise this line up just a little bit. And it even has hash marks that allow you to make a straight line, to draw a straight line by lining up your marks. So it is super handy. And then do the one up here. Actually, I should give this panel more room and go smaller with this panel. And this panel should go all the way up to the top of the page and this panel should be there. Nice little inset panel. You know what? I did say I was going to look up how to draw someone playing guitar. So let me pull that reference up. My computer wants to fight me, so I'll just grab my phone. I guess that way I can show you guys what reference I end up going with. You guys can see there are some pretty ridiculous poses. Although, I think this one's pretty decent. So we'll draw the heads in the background first. We're gonna draw them in a couple of different sizes to imply depth. And we're not really worrying right now about perspective. Just trying to get a nice tight thumbnail. And I've already started, I believe, a Pinterest board with refs for these characters. So I'm gonna drop the guitar ref in as well. We have everything nice, together, and consistent. Actually, I wanna push the door over a little bit. Actually, in this panel, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in the background first since we have some size restrictions going on. And move that over. And 
you guys should note that I am at this point in time not filling anything in too much and the reason for that is in case I have to redraw things I don't want to have to erase a bunch of details that I've put in. So it's easier if I just keep everything very loose and stick figure right now. And then those of you who have watched my intro to comic craft videos know that I do prefer to do tighter thumbnails. So as I work, I'll go ahead and tighten them up. And for me, this makes it a lot easier in subsequent stages because a lot of my work has been figured out for me. I'm also trying to work in as much body language as I can, especially in something like this where, you know, we've only got two pages to get our story across. So one of the reasons I opted to just print this out rather than sketch it from scratch is sometimes I have a lot of trouble with composition unless I can directly reference the blank page. So having a rather directly reference blue lines on, instead of a blank page, sorry about that. So having, oh, you know, it means I'm gonna have to do a character design for the teacher. So maybe I will try to get that done tonight as well. We already have a style picked out. After I get these rough, this sort of rough sketch finished, I'll start designing the teacher. And then I'll check in with you guys again to finish these. And so that would be like an upshot if I put her too low. Because she's really a little shorter, but not much shorter than Emma. So that's something else you've got to consider when you're doing thumbnails. And it is totally okay to sketch outside the lines when you're doing thumbnails and roughs. It's definitely one of those whatever you need to do to get the job done sort of situations. All right, so I have blue lines sketched out. I need to go, bleh, I need to go design the teacher. I'll be right back. All right, so I return with a design for the teacher as well as my two original character designs for reference. I have pretty much nowhere I can put them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten up these thumbnails. And given how small some of these panels are, putting in too much detail would just be pointless. So you want enough so that when you're doing your roughs, you don't necessarily have to have, if you had a script, you don't have to have your script in front of you, except for maybe expression direction. And I like to have my thumbnails tight enough that someone else can read them. It always bugged me at SCAD when we would critique each other's thumbnails and I was given someone's that were just like un unreadably loose. Because there's not really a whole lot, if you can't tell what's going on, there's not really a whole lot you can say to help them out one way or the other. And then, as I go through each panel, I'm going to go ahead and go back over them with graphite. And I find that softer graphite, it's easier to um, sort of draw over your non-photo blue than if you use something too hard. So I am probably using a two, uh, 2B.
Now when I'm in the rough phase, I'll probably try to add some, they're gonna stay in silhouette, I think, but I'm um, probably gonna try to add some sort of distinctive features, like different hairstyles and stuff. But for now, just sketching them in like that is fine. All right, so that's our first panel. All right, guys, so I'm gonna work on the rest of this page in time-lapse and then check in with you guys. guys so our thumbnail is finished next step is for me to scan this and um, enlarge it a little bit and tighten it up as a rough I don't intend on doing that on camera because it's a pretty time-consuming process and it's probably fairly boring to watch but if you're interested in learning about perspective especially perspective for comics check out my intro to comic craft uh, blog series at natosoup.blogspot.com and my intro to comic craft comic craft not comic crack comic craft videos here on this channel i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial i hope it has inspired you to pick up a pencil and get to making comics and i hope you guys will have a great day so see you again really soon thank you so much for hanging out bye guys